Hello comp lovers, uh, Paul Kerwin here, I'm assuming that this live stream is working. It's first time I'm trying to run Nuke through a live stream, so we'll see whether or not that works. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about compositing, um, and part of it is to pass on that experience, um, the pleasure and the pain of doing it for a very long time. Um, and as I've thought about how I'm going to approach this, uh, one of the things that's come through from a lot of the training that I used to do um, was that I can really only talk about it while I'm doing it, okay? Uh, so uh, it's probably going to be a bit stream of consciousness, but um, in order for me to talk about um, uh, compositing, I really need to do it, okay? So um, I want to show the process of compositing. Um, how to break down uh, compositing challenges into pieces, how to make it manageable, um, how to uh, conceive of these shots, figure out how to put them together and how to get them final. We want to uh, be able to get these through tech check uh, as well. So the process of, of making sure that the, the shot is technically um, worthy of being in a film. I mean, I talk about film, uh, but it's really film broadcast now. Uh, anything that's, uh, that's high quality visual effects um, that's going to be broadcast to a wide audience. Um, so as I started to sit down and to go through the process of how I was going to uh, demonstrate this stuff, of course, um, the the real the big issue uh, is I'm no longer working for a visual effects facility. Okay, um, and that's both good and bad. Uh, the reason that it's uh, good uh, is because if I'm working for a visual effects facility, I'm not actually allowed. To, uh, to show what I'm doing. I can't talk about what I'm doing. I can't certainly can't uh, demonstrate to um, anyone outside the facility um, uh, what the process is or what I'm working on. I'm not allowed to talk about it. I can't talk about the script. I can't talk about who lives or who dies um, because uh, that's all uh, pretty much under lock and key. Uh, the intellectual property of the, of the studio and the facility is, is uh, of the highest priority and it's essentially committing um, uh, career suicide to discuss anything that you're currently working on um, uh, with anyone outside the facility. Uh, they send the lawyers around uh, and there's not much left uh, when they're finished. Okay. So the disadvantage, so the advantage of me not working for a VFX facility is I can actually talk about the things that I'm compositing. Uh, I can go through the process, I can demonstrate it, I can talk about tips and tricks and techniques and all that sort of stuff. I can also talk about uh, what it's like to work in the industry um, uh, without uh, having people following me uh, through the street and uh, throwing the book at me. Okay, so that's really good uh, and that's something that I'm quite enjoying to be honest. Um, the downside of not working in a visual effects facility at the moment is I'm not being fed a steady stream of, uh, of plates and shots to work on. Okay, um, so that's a disadvantage. So I don't have a million dollar um, uh, unit running around uh, shooting things with super high quality cameras um, and uh, a team of people to feed me elements and so on. Um, so that's that's the one of the challenges for me. So the way that I'm um, working with that is that I have to uh, essentially produce the entire shot myself. Um, I, so I have to shoot background plates, either I have to shoot them or I have to um, produce them um, using uh, uh, stock footage or elements that I purchased from, from other, other places. Okay, um, And uh, I have to do all of that uh, with the goal in mind of being able to, you know, talk about compositing to really put some high quality stuff together. It's the stuff that I'm into, um, uh, and uh, and to help pass that information and uh, techniques and so on, on to others as well. Um, okay. So this is the first shot that I've uh, that I've started to throw together. I've got a bunch of stuff I'm I'm interested in doing. I am talking to a couple of guys. I'm putting a small team together, so I'm uh, having people who are going to be producing CG elements for me, uh, as well as matte painting elements, uh, so that they can have uh, that input and and produce uh, the parts of the visual effects pipeline that I'm not a specialist in. I'm a specialist compositor, a photo real compositor. Um, so CG elements, lighting, uh, modelling, animation. Um, um, that is not something that I have done a lot of, uh, so I should be getting other people to do that for me. Um, but the first couple of shots that I'm going to start off with are ones where I don't need a lot of CG, uh, and this is one of those. 
Um, so this is my VA1 concept. It's very much a, a, v, a first version. I'm not really a concept artist. I've done some of it, but uh, the people who are specialist uh, concept artists are uh, a breed unto themselves. Um, I'm, a, I'm a compositor. I've done a lot of look development work, uh, but I have not done a huge amount of concept, what they would call concept art. Uh, so this is, I'm, almost, uh, I'm calling it a concept, but it's more look development. Um, so this is a plate that I have shot. This is actually looking out over uh, the Adelaide Hills or the foothills of the Adelaide Hills. If I show you what my plate looks like. Okay, uh, so this is actually quite close to where I live. <laughs> and uh, what I like about, about this landscape when, I, when I'm looking at it is, is this, little, is this uh, little dell, if you like it. This, this ridge line here and the sense of depth that you get with what's behind it. So basically this line here um, uh, and uh, this far line and the line of hills. Right? So I thought it would be a good way to do like a wide establishing shot. Okay, they're very common um, in industry, of course. Uh, whether it's uh, you know Hogwarts or the castle with the uh, uh, you know the crazy wizard in it, um, or uh, you know the uh, the um, you know the secret military base in the hills where the you know whoever's taking on the Avengers in this movie, uh, wherever they're hiding out, or whatever it is that's in your film. Uh, in the project that you're working on, the long establishing shot uh, with a fairly wide angle uh, is, is obviously like a film staple. It's quite common. So, so let's uh, let's look at, um, at marking up uh, and working up this kind of plate uh, into something that uh, looks like it could be in a movie. Okay, I really want to be working with stuff that's as much as possible like what you'll see, uh, like what will come across your desk in industry. Okay. The majority of the stuff that I look at that's uh, that's out there in the real world uh, and accessible to people um, for sort of training and demonstration purposes is, is pretty bad, at least the majority of what I'm looking at is, is, is not great. It doesn't bear a great deal of resemblance to what you'll see in the real world, um, both technically and creatively. Uh, it's very much shot for purpose. So part of what I'm trying to do is to do stuff that I think is cool, um, but also stuff that uh, bears a strong resemblance to the kind of work that you'll actually see uh, in the real world. Okay. So that's my plate. Um, so it's it's about this ridge line, nestling something in behind that. Um, I want to extend these hills. So I've got uh, a greater line of hills uh, in the distance, um, and the the trees on the side are problematic. They'll probably come out as well. If I come back to my concept, so when you're handed a compositing shot, the first thing that you should be trying to figure out is what's it in the movie for? What's it trying to say? Okay, um, you need to get in your client's head, right? Whether your client is, you know, your direct supervisor or the VFX supervisor for the show, or it's um, your uh, uh, the client. Uh, you know, on the on the other side of the studio, um, you need to get into their head. What is it they're after? Why why is this shot in the film? Uh, what's it trying to say? And the thing about this shot is, what it's really trying to say is, it's trying to say two things. It's trying to say scale. So this castle um, needs to feel large. It needs to feel significant. Um, uh, the the other thing apart from scale is, I want it to look cool. Okay, I want it to be beautiful, like the old cl the classical version of of a beautiful shot. So you're going to have your god rays from the right hand side, lots of atmospheric elements. You want a dramatic sky. This sky is a, is a is a is a temp sky. It's a, a very much a VO1 for the sky replacement. It doesn't have uh, doesn't have what we need, but uh, a sky replacement is part of it. And so you're going to want a, a big dramatic scene. You want it to feel large. Um, you want whoever the characters are who are living in this to be important. Okay, it's a, it's it's about significance. Okay, um, and so we're going to be talking a fair bit with this shot about scale um, and how to bring scale into into the shot as we progress. See, this will happen over several live streams. Uh, for right now, I suppose I'm just trying to introduce my VO1 concept and talk about where we want to take the shot. So we're going to be putting extra things in here to make it feel big. Um, so there'll be, uh, you know, atmospheric elements, so smoke, 
uh, coming off uh, cooking fires and things like that. We, we won't necessarily see stuff that's too specific. It's not like we're going to see a cooking fire in here because we just don't have, we're not that close, I and mean, that's fine. But we want to give the sense that this is an inhabited place there are people in it uh, and that all lends itself to the sense of, of, of place and and scale that we're trying to get into this shot okay so there might not be individual smoke elements but there'll be just a general haziness that will happen uh, that will come from from this uh, from this castle obviously we want the beauty of the of the rays coming in I want to give a sense of size uh, and so I'll be putting in more distant lines of hills, see if we can get the sense of marching hills into the distance here so that this kind of mountain range feels bigger. Um, the framing here, these trees, this is a pine on the left and a eucalyptus on the right. Uh, originally I thought they might help um, when I was looking at the plate. I thought that that might be not bad as a framing device. Uh, now I think in actual fact I'll probably lose both of them because they're, 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 they're um, they, I want this to feel larger over here, more of a sense of distance so this tree is going to come out. So there's going to be a bit of paint and patch replacement. This here is coming out, will need to be replaced probably some, from stuff that I will source from within the plate uh, in order to extend that. Um, uh, obviously uh, as well a sky replacement. Um, this sky doesn't have the drama, and they're also going, I want it to be more dramatic. Yeah, so we want to give that really strong sense of like a low, um, late afternoon, golden hour, really strong sun angle, uh, angled light from screen right. Okay, so this sky doesn't have that. It's more interesting than the original sky, which is that. Okay, so that sky is obviously not going to, uh, not going to do. And um, so we want to be able to, to bring in a bit more uh, like a sky replacement. Um, So DMP, digital matte painting, obviously we'll be bringing in those elements here. So in the industry you say this is a DMP replacement, you're doing a sky replacement. Uh, you're doing a bunch of clean up, so you're going to be cleaning up uh, or, you know, screen front, screen right. There are actually some, um, some uh, houses that are visible in here, they'll have to come out. Um, this uh, this uh, smokestack will have to come out and possibly some of the trees. Okay, uh, and sky replacements. So sky replacements are quite common. Um, in industry a lot of the time because they just don't get the sky that they want uh, and sky replacements bring in a lot of pretty standard technical issues that you have um, for how to make the edges look nice and how to how to get it to final uh, dealing with buzzing edges when you've got details like trees and so on how can I keep that detail as much as possible um, it's worth me stating this is a template uh, I ne actually need to shoot uh, I have not shot the real plate for this yet, but that will happen sometime in the next week, I think. That would be the plan. Um, one of the things about shooting, and the, probably the last thing I need to, to bring up before I jump off, um, is that uh, this is a VO1 concept. So this is really just me blocking in a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's really a blocking test just to see, you know what, can I actually make this stuff work? Um, has what the client given me, you know, or you know, I'm sitting in a facility, they say, this is your plate, here's some of the elements you're going to get from other departments, and so how am I going to be able to put this shot for, uh, together? What are my challenges going to be? What am I going to need in order to get it to get it final? How can I make it as good as I can make it look? Right? You're always looking to add value. You're always looking to say, what can I do to bring life to this shot? So we'll, we'll add the, the, um, the, you know, the standard uh, birds here, um, some some elements of smoke drifting. We'll probably put a bit of drifting clouds in there as well. Um, have a little bit of a handheld move on it. We need to bring life to the shot. We need to make it as good as possible. You're always trying to think of how can I improve the work? How can I make it better? Not only how can I um, give the client what they want, uh, but how can I um, make them even happy? How can I give them that what they don't even know they want? Right. Um, a lot of compositing is cleanup and removal and fixing work, but there is a lot as well that's about addition, that's about creation, and that's what one of these, that's what this shot is going to be. I'm going to have to fix a bunch of technical stuff in here, but I'm also just looking for something that you could see in a film and you could go, wow, what a cool castle, wish I was there. Right. Um, so it's about that sense of scale and grandeur, uh, but also trying to make it as realistic and as photo real as possible. Um, the last thing I probably need to talk about is that 
Um, the next round that I do on this guy, which is going to be Concept V2, is going to be playing mainly with composition. When I look at this, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, this 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 will work. I I I think I I can have I can make what I need to get this thing done. Um, but the composition is is pretty crap. You would never ever uh, put this right in centre frame. You know, you'd probably be looking to use a rule of thirds and, and kind of rack it over to the left and down a little bit, uh, and then fill this area obviously with. So the composition is probably the weakest part of this at the moment. Um, so what I'd be looking to do would be reframing this, drop this guy down here. Um, I'm going to have additional patches on the left and right. I want to get my marching hills in here because it's about a, a sense of scale and distance. Um, and then probably just a quick removal of these trees as well, um, just to see what else, uh, see, see how much I need to extend to the right hand side. Uh, also, the next thing I, I would probably do as well is I'd start to really build some concept, uh, sorry, some reference frames. I have a little bit of reference in here um, that I have found uh, just from stock footage and so on. Um, and so it's about trying to, uh, uh, normally with something like this, uh, you won't necessarily have carte blanche, you won't uh, necessarily be uh, creating this stuff from scratch in terms of the look. Uh, you would have someone who was above you in the chain, whether it's a supervisor who's running uh, the show and your, at your facility or whether it's uh, someone, you know, essentially art department above them. Uh, so they would provide reference and say, oh, here's this footage that we really like or here's a real castle or here's something from another movie. This is something from Thor or this is something from Harry Potter or whatever it is um, that gives an indication of the direction they want to go in. Um, in this case, I, I don't have that. I'm giving that direction myself. But I will come up with some uh, reference footage um, that is going to speak to the kind of shot that we want to final here. Right? So what is it going to look like? Uh, we definitely want to push the golden hour more. This kind of you know side lighting. What can we do to enhance that? We can we can play with the colour a bit to bring more red and golden tones in. Um, obviously the uh, the the god rays are strictly a VO1, but we want to bring in that really strong sense of of of, of heat and light from the right hand side um, to bring in a sense of drama to the castle to really push the contrast uh, as much as possible. Which is why golden hour is so popular for pretty much anything, um, whether it's uh, showing how cool Hogwarts can be, you know, in the late afternoon, or whether it's, you know, an insurance company out of happy families running down the beach. There's nothing quite like Golden Hour because it brings that sense of contrast and drama to whatever is in the foreground. Okay, uh, so anyway, thanks for hearing me talk. <laughs> Hopefully this will be uh, entertaining and you'll learn something as we go. Uh, but the main step for me at the moment is I need to shoot a proper plate for this. So, so in order to shoot the plate, um, I need to uh, have a better idea of what framing is going to work. So it's about the composition of the shot. So I'll probably come back uh, tomorrow um, and talk a little bit about what, uh, what uh, I'm hoping to do for round two. But it's, it's mainly going to be about let's jump into Nuke um, and let's uh, start to push this around in terms of composition so I can figure out what plate I want to shoot. Uh, this is my Nuke script at the moment, very straightforward. Uh, I'm building this very much as if it's a single frame. You tend to work differently in Nuke uh, to do concept work than you do to use, um, to, to do anything to do with moving footage. Um, Nuke is built for moving footage and it's generally best to approach it with that in mind. Uh, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble by working, assuming you're going to be in a single frame. Uh, and when you have to come out of single frame mode, uh, all of a sudden, essentially, you have to start your comp again. Um, so that's something else I'll be talking about uh, next time my live stream, which will probably be tomorrow. Okay, well, thanks for listening. Hopefully, uh, by the time I speak to you next time and do this again, uh, I'll have a VO2 up, which will have a, uh, a composition uh, which is uh, improved. Uh, but like I said, I'm hoping that you continue to join me on this journey, uh, the journey of this shot as we start from really from the conception um, all the way through to how do we actually uh, final it to a, to as a higher technical standard as I can make it given the fact that I'm, I'm shooting this uh, myself on a smartphone. Uh, but uh, you know I think it's going to be pretty cool. This is one of a number of shots that I'm going to have on the boil. Uh, but I wanted to start with this one because uh, it's been I've been looking at this ridge line from nearby house uh, 
from near my house for quite a while and I thought, you know what, wouldn't it be cool if there was a uh, massive medieval castle there? Um, in Australia we don't have massive medieval castles so I do tend to have this little part of my brain that's always putting them into the landscape and that's, uh, that's what's going to bring this shot in. Um, anyway, so thanks for listening uh, and hopefully I'll be speaking about this again soon. Bye.